This is Beth Fisher from Bridging Commercial Magazine and we have Nicola Firth from Knowledge Bank. <laughs> Thanks for coming and joining us on this podcast. Today. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> Um, can you start with the company you work for and give us a little bit of an elevator pitch for anyone who doesn't know what you do? Okay, so uh, I work for Knowledge Bank. Knowledge Bank is uh, the largest criteria search system in the UK. So uh, prior to Knowledge Bank, mortgage lending criteria, and we're talking residential, buy select, second charges, equity release, bridging, commercial, it's all on there. Um, that was all held um, in very ad hoc places, mm. spreadsheets, little black books, people's yep. memories. And what we did is we brought that all together, put it in one place. Uh, the systems kept up to date by lenders themselves, so so it's real time. Mm. And um, and brokers can go on there and place those cases, um, whether whether it's something they're familiar with or, or maybe a little bit more unfamiliar with. Um, they can still find the answers and place cases and save them hours and hours of time. <laughs> we'll get, around. Where did you get the idea from to start it? Well, my background in the industry is as a broker. Right. Um, so I've been a broker um, sort of pre-2008 and post-2008, which were very different markets. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so, so predominantly residential and buy select that I did at the time. And um, I just thought, you know what, there has to be a better way. And I actually went... To, to find this system I thought surely somebody's done that this makes sense why yeah. would you not put everything in one easily accessible place yeah. you know on the internet you know looked like that was going to catch on in <laughs> 2017 you know so so that's I just couldn't find it I thought why has nobody done this yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where that's where Knowledge Bank was born amazing have you had any kind of so you t told me a little bit about your kind of uh, entry into the market and what you, what you were doing before um, have you had any mentors in this space or anyone you would consider a mentor I haven't had any mentors. I think I think probably because um, what we've done is is so unique. So it's been a case of finding our way as we go. Having said that, having said that, over the last couple of years, I have met some amazing and inspiring people in the industry, and people on on the, the, the other side of the industry to what I was previously. Um, you know, and, and especially you know the, the, the sort of women in finance things. Some amazing people that you know I now call friends yeah, and yeah. that have absolutely inspired me, and that have you know have been sort of mentors as we've gone along, really, because we you know we, we chat and, and you pick a lot up from them. Uh, people that have been doing this a long yeah. time. So yeah, there are we are very lucky in our industry. There is some real real talent and genuinely lovely people as well. Absolutely, and uh, I mean that probably follows on to my next question, which is. What's your kind of words of wisdom, so to speak, or like what what would you say to anyone who broker wise who's looking to enter the specialist finance market? Like what what would you say is like the best advice you could give them? I, I would say absolutely go for it. The tools are out there. I mean, you know, I know I'm talking about Knowledge Bank, but actually, genuinely, that is, you know, I was just having a chat with uh, one of the guys from Together, and we were talking about this, and he was saying the brokers that he sees, you know, this is just a gift for the specialist market because yeah. all of a sudden they're able to place cases without making loads and loads of phone calls you know and waiting for things to come back there's all the information's there yeah so i think that i honestly don't think there's ever been a better time i think i think you've got the demand that's there um you know that that is still there and you've actually got the tools for the job as well which is which is just fantastic so, Absolutely. so so anybody thinking of getting into the specialist market now really is the time it really is now's where the opportunities are absolutely <laughs> and also we've got quite a big school shortage as well so yeah <laughs> even yeah. on the lender side yeah, we have, and, and you know, I've spoken to a couple of people today that are you know later on in their careers and, and coming into the specialist market, yeah. and that's great, you know, because they're going to use all that experience that they had, um, you know, in, in other sectors. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, and specialist is really interesting as well, isn't it? That's the other thing, you know, you never know what you're going to come across next. Absolutely, and that's, uh, the right to be in the spice of life, it's uh, it's perfect. <laughs> What would you like to see change in the market in 2020, or what like big shift do you expect to see? I think it's difficult to say what we what to expect. What to expect? Goodness me, <laughs> with where we are now, what to say? But you know, in terms of, um, I've had a couple of conversations today, really, because because one thing I find really interesting is regulated bridging. Okay, and I think that is something that. Um, you know we should see more of we're seeing that top in the charts and every month in our top search yeah I've seen, um, we yeah. know lenders are seeing that as well and i just think that, that is such an untapped market because i think i think there's potentially customers being turned away because perhaps residential brokers uh, traditionally residential brokers don't know what to do with it but it's interesting customers are actually asking for, for, for bridging they're, they're aware of it you know right and, okay and, and we throw regulated bridging into, into that mix and i and i think that is that was going to be a really interesting one to watch. Yeah. Does the criteria um, uh, pick up second charge bridging? 
Yes, it does, yeah. It does. And have, what trends have you seen lately on that side? Yeah, again, you know, the, the, the regulated stuff, it's, it's just, you know, it's always the, um, it's at the top of the debt consolidation stuff yeah. and things like that. So that's, uh, so yeah, we do see the trends and it's quite interesting to see um, how they sort of move up and down the top tens. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know. and it changes pretty much quite yeah. Or, or, you know, uh, it's quarter on quarter, or you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's not the same, same things. And sometimes it takes like a whole like three months before something comes back on again from yeah, the top five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it does. And, and and what's really interesting then is, is you're reading around the other stories in the press, and 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 that the narrative accompanies that. You know, we're we're from lenders and what's happening in the market. So yeah, you do. It, it's really interesting because we've never had this insight before. Yeah. You know, so it's really really interesting to see like what are they all searching for, exactly. what are customers asking for. Yeah, I bet lenders are it yes it's using the information from that <laughs> to yeah, help them show their products because because you know at the most they've had um retrospective product data which yeah. is always around three months out of date whereas we, you know with our insights we're able to tell lenders in real time actually this is what brokers around the country or this is what brokers in this part of the country are looking for so so essentially it's like telling them where to fish you know yeah, if, they, yeah. if they've got that you know get your sales and marketing guys out or if there's a trend that we see okay this is coming up because we do have some criteria categories that are perhaps curveballs but we put them in there because we think well somebody's asked for that yep. and you don't know you just there might be more you don't know who, who, who want it exactly what, what's so, been an example of something that's been a little bit so probably um, one of the most radical out there ones we, we've got um, <laughs> about uh, Bitcoin so we've okay. got about people paying deposits in Bitcoin and right. you know what that may come to nothing but you don't know do you if a lot of people are asking for it you just don't know so yeah. we've, got, we've got to put a few you know, weird so, ones in there yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sit on the outside really but uh, but yeah that's that's probably um, probably the, but it does get searched yeah I bet. Not, not much but it does get searched what about stuff like modular building and things like that does that does that come into anything like like a different types of um, uh, asset class that's, that's, that's used modern methods of construction. Yeah, definitely. And we have um, we have a lot of a big section on property uh, property types and construction types. Right. Um, so we have a huge. Uh, and, and next year you'll see something else from us uh, on that as well. Nice. Um, that, yeah, <laughs> just as a spoiler alert there. Um, but yeah, you'll see something else from us that. So so we are um, that we're, we're doing a, a big thing on that because you know at the end of the day it's all about the property, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. it's all about the property. So so yeah, we we've really gone to town on that. We've got some real, again, we've got sort of outside stuff in there. But yeah, uh, but yeah modular stuff is, is definitely on there. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge push. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for coming in today. It's Thank been you. Great. It's been fantastic. <laughs> it has been the show as well. Thank Good. you. Thanks.